UB Jupiter, a good karma brand's radio station. Yo, Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys. Take a look at what they're doing over there in Atlanta with Arthur Blank and Terry Fontenot. That's what you call going all in. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios. The man your man could smell. It. Theo Dorsey is theoretically speaking. But are you a different animal and the same beast? What does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Streaming live on YouTube, here's Theo Dorsey. Good people. It's a thirsty Thursday here on Theoretically Speaking. It's your boy Theo Dorsey. Kicking it with you. We got my guy C Cat on the other side of the glass on the ones and twos. And as we cruise, it's gonna be a fun day. We got Tina pulling up later on for the Thirsty Thursday to do some theoreticals. Uh, we also, of course, are gonna hit the safe bound get around, heading all over the nation for the biggest sports topics. We're gonna head out to Colorado as well, because I don't know what the heck they're cooking or, or smoking up there at uh Colorado State, but it needs to be addressed. Because uh, whoa, wow we but also, man, I mean, coming into this year, there was so many reasons to, like, not give a damn about what was going on in the NFC South. And that's, you know, pretty typical when you think about the past decade in the NFL, CCAT. I mean, it, it's it's so many, uh, there's so many highly competitive divisions and divisions that have multiple contenders and, and you know, tantalizing quarterbacks and and weapons that get drafted highly in fantasy football. Just like there's a lot of teams out there and divisions that are packed with talent. And then there's the NFC South. But, but ever since the NFL draft, when the Falcons, you know, after signing Kirk Cousins to that major deal, uh, 40 plus million guaranteed coming off the Achilles injuries, they they draft Michael Penix Jr., Everybody's criticizing the move, including me, because I don't know what the hell you're thinking, getting one of the older quarterbacks in the draft to sit behind Kirk Cousins for at least two years until you start getting value out of the rookie quarterback. Ever since then, the Falcons have been kind of like the butt of the joke in the NFL when it comes to offseason discourse, especially like with Mike Tannenbaum, who joins us, former NFL GM. Like He has been making fun of that move outwardly since it happened, along with everybody else, and it feels like the direction of that franchise was kind of up in the air. People were all the way out on it, and now things are changing. Yeah, you dealt with Marcus Mariota quarterback play. You dealt with Desmond Ritter quarterback play. It looked aimless there in the ATL. Yeah, it was. It was for a while. Now they have Kirk Cousins in-house. They got their future of the franchise behind him and Michael Penix. And then what they've done over the past couple of days, bringing in edge rusher Matthew Judon, former Patriot, uh, who's again, he's 32 years old. I don't know how much juice is left in the tank, but again, that's what we wanted them to do with the eight pick in the draft is get a pass rusher. They address that need. And then today, today to get the best available player on the market, a guy who has been all pro for the past three years. And I mean, might I say on the day where we're going to kick off coverage to high school football um, here in Palm Beach County in the Treasure Coast, we're going to start our play coverage of the high school football season, the kickoff classics. Kicking off tonight. I'll be at Pahokee tonight, by the way. CK. Okay, long trip ahead. Yeah. What, what's the game of the week tomorrow on High School Game Day? It is Martin County at Seminole Ridge. Got you, got you. So we got our coverage options um, ahead of us right now. It is poetic because we have Martin County's most prized alumna and Justin Simmons signing with the Atlanta Falcons one year up to $8 million, I think $7.5 million guaranteed, Three straight years he's been an all-pro in this league. Um, He has the most interceptions in the NFL since he's entered it in 2016, by the way, too. Every team right now, every squad, if you want to contend, if you're trying to win a Super Bowl, there's one guy, there's one man in his team that you're trying to get past, and that's Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Justin Simmons, five career interceptions, the most all-time against Patrick Mahomes. So the Martin County product finds his home in Atlanta, and it really does now feel like they're building something that is going to be incomparable, especially in that division. Like, I was making fun of them just weeks ago, just months ago, based off what they did in the draft. I still think it's improper uh, roster breakdown. It's improper uh, utilization of resources to be spending that much on quarterback and then drafting a guy that high in the draft. But now that they're cooking up something on defense and also 
it feels like they're actually going all in. They're not just talking that talk like the Cowboys did. And with the Jets, what they're doing, they're kind of going all in, but partially just appeasing Aaron Rodgers and also buying a guy that wants a contract extension that you apparently knew about but then didn't get done, and now he might be on the way out the door as well in the sound Reddick. Like, the Atlanta Falcons look like a good, stable organization that's going all in this year, and the team and the fan base has something to be happy about. I, I'm, I'm kind of cheerful for those Falcons fans in my life that they have something to look forward to. But beyond that, I look at that division – and, dude, it's a thirsty Thursday. But the NFC South outside of the Falcons, absolutely no juice. We can wrap that division up today. We can crown the Falcons today, not play the season out, and just start them at home in the playoffs. Like, I don't feel out of bounds for saying that right now, CK. Want to know the odds? The division odds? Yeah, give me the hard rock bet odds for, for the NFC South right now. I would guess the Falcons way out ahead of the pack. So you are correct. They are the only team in minus money, of course. They are at minus 130 to win the NFC South this year. Close behind them, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at plus 325. That's the Saints, plus 350. And Panthers are nowhere to be found. They're at plus 1,100. I mean, come on. (laughs) Like, it's almost disrespectful to list the Panthers' odds as, like, a shot at winning the division. They'd be lucky to win a few games in Carolina. Like, with that owner, and again, I I still have – I'm holding out hope that Bryce Young can be a good quarterback in this league. I'm not out on him. I'm out on the franchise and the owner. But with that owner and Dave Tepper, they'd be lucky to win a few games in Carolina, let alone the division. Plus what? You said 1,000? Plus 1,100. What's the phrase? Yeah, if you're putting hard-earned money on the Panthers to win the division, call the number. Yeah. Call call the number. Yes. Matter of fact, don't just call it. Put it on speed dial. Uh, I would, I would call, I would put that number, hang it on the fridge, keep it handy because you might not, if you're putting money on the Panthers to win a division or really to win anything this year, um, yeah, you need to be, that number needs to be like second nature to you. Call that number more than you call your mom. Um, but call this number if you think there's a different division that's already wrapped up, because to me, it's clear cut in the NFL today. When you look around of the eight divisions, especially in the NFC, There's one that looks particularly like we can wrap that thing up today, and I have no problem calling it. The Atlanta Falcons have the NFC South crown, and we can start them off in the postseason. Again, I don't even have to use the health caveat with the Falcons because they they drafted their their backup, their heir apparent, and Michael Penix Jr. feels foolproof that even with the Kirk Cousins injury, the Falcons are in good shape. Yeah, you kind of just get to see the future early. Yeah. Yeah, 888-760-3776, 888-760-3776. That's the number to tap in. The theoretically speaking, call us on the Baptist Health Hotline. Which division in the NFL right now can you just wrap up today? I mean, because the NFC South, absolutely juiceless, as close to irrelevant as you can get, and the Falcons have taken advantage. They're actually all in. They have that crown right now today. We'll see what they do in the playoffs. Baptist Health Hotline, are you experiencing foot and ankle pain and need to see an expert in the field? Baptist Health Orthopedic Care is a team of foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons and specialists who are regarded as leaders in their specialty. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care combines its resources of experienced physicians and leading edge treatments and technology to provide advanced orthopedic, foot and ankle, joint replacement, spine and sports medicine care. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has offices conveniently located in Palm Beach County through the Florida Keys. Learn more by visiting baptisthealth.net slash ortho. The Falcons clearly all in. They clearly have a head and shoulders lead on the rest of that division. And also, they they have the sense of urgency you should have when you have a 40-plus-year-old quarterback coming in uh, for a couple of years after a major injury and you got that roster with so many tantalizing uh, talents. Drake London, B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, dare I say I'm excited to see what the Falcons can do this year. And it, it feels like, again, for me, like recently, like I, I, I find myself in these like precarious situations, right? Like so like literally a week ago today, was that when, when, when did we do top 63? Last Friday was top 63 event that we had at Kaiser University. Um, I, I emceed that event. We had a great event, awarded the top 63 high school football seniors ahead of the uh, year, along with the top 10 flag football uh, players ahead of their season in the spring. And that morning, I had put it on my own heart to make sure that I can uh, get – I got a little handy. 
that morning. I was trying to make sure I can get the house in order because my wife was out of town. She uh, she wanted to make sure, you know, I wanted to make sure I was a comfortable uh, environment to bring her back into. That morning, Seacat, I-, I found myself on the roof of my house because I was trying to patch up these screens. Out here in Florida, there's a lot of different, like I have the courtyard. We call it the Bali Bungalow. And it's a screened-in courtyard from the top and in the front part. So you're sitting outside, but you're really inside to keep the insects and all the bugs out. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I absolutely love that area. But when I had went out of town, when I went out of town the last couple of weeks to Chicago and Minneapolis and I was gone, that screen, I'm at war right now with these squirrels because they're all crawling all over my house. They're wrecking shop. And they ripped up my screen. So there was all these holes in the screen. Leaves were falling in. It was a, 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 an utter mess. So I, I hit my neighbor up. I got this this big ladder, threw it on the side of the house, and for me, I'm absolutely afraid of heights. Like, are you a guy, like, for, for you, are you two stories up, are you good? I love the heights. Yeah? Yeah, I have no problem with them. That's, I, I, am, um, I am terrified of heights. I do not like them at all. I, I, I grew up in a two-story house in Houston, and when I used to, like, even walk near the banister from the second floor, I, I, a lot of times I had to look away. Hmm. I'm that much of a coward of being up in the sky. So, mind you, my house you've been to at Seacats, just one story. Yeah. Just one story. I'm on the roof of that thing trying to hem up the uh, the screen. And, and I will say, I'll show you pictures later, Seacat. I did an absolutely fine job. I sealed it up perfectly. No holes in that thing. You know, you got to get the spline fixer thing, and I was sliding the spline right in there. Fix the screen up perfectly because they overcharge you for that stuff anyways. I don't know what your, like, gun situation is, but, like, you should get one to kill those squirrels. That's ridiculous. If yeah. a squirrel was, like, destroying my property, goodbye. I Twice. don't care about Bambi and all the wonderful creatures you see in the woods. No, I'm blasting you to the high heavens. So, yes, I agree. The problem is you kill a squirrel, which I don't know if it's legal or not. Like, how do I even know that was the squirrel? Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's not like I said. There's there's multiple squirrels in this world. I don't want to like just randomly no, go out and you just know take a squirrel out. Three dead innocent squirrels is worth getting the one that was the perpetrator. It would. Be. I'm willing to sacrifice three innocent squirrels if I know that one of the or two or two of those were innocent and one of them was the perpetrator. I'm not against you on that. I'm not against you on that. But what I would say is, firing off a gun to to <laughs> knock a squirrel out in the neighborhood that I live in, it, I don't think it would go over well. I don't think it would go over well with my neighbors. But anyway, again, I was talking about precarious situations and how you get yourself out of them. I'm on the roof. I fixed the screen. And I realized in that moment, Seacat, as I leaned over, and again, it's just one story. I'm an absolute coward. I'm I'm leaned over the roof. I'm sitting on the top. There's no way for me to get from where I was sitting to that ladder safely without knocking the ladder over and hurting myself further, like making it a bigger deal. So I knew at some point I had to jump off that roof. I had to take a leap of faith onto the ground and hope that my 31-year-old body can withhold that because, again, you know, my knees and ankles ain't the same as they was back in the day. You're like 6'2", right? Six flat. You're six flat. Yeah. And your ceilings can't be taller than 20 feet if it's a one-story house. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, about about 20. You're just scared of cat, dude. That's so easy. It it feels different. So when you're walking up to it and you look up, it doesn't look that bad. But when you're up there on the roof, it it's a different feel. There's a different gravitas to it. I understand that, again, my joints might not hold up the same way. I mean, I might be, you know, in line at Baptist Health Orthopedic Care trying to prove a point because Seacat's calling me a coward. Yeah, I'm going to go to your house and jump off your roof as soon as possible. <laughs> Just so it can prove that we'll it can be done without much, I don't know, thought. We'll line that up. But here's the, here again, here's the thing. And I'm comparing my situation to what the Falcons situation was this offseason, especially with all of the eyes and attention on them. As I sat on that roof, and it took me about 10 minutes, literally, of deciding whether or not do I take the leap, do I do a jump and roll thing to make sure I don't buckle my knee too hard and snap anything. There was a neighbor, a neighbor that pulled up and parked, and he could see me from his car. And he's looking at me um, as I'm cowardly sitting on the roof, contemplating my next move. And honestly, if it had not been for that grown man. Pressuring you? Pressuring me with his eyes, staring me down, wondering what the hell I'm doing sitting up on my roof. That kind of is what convinced me to go all in. Take a leap of faith. Jump off of that house. And you know what? Not only did I jump off the roof, Seacat, I jumped off the roof. I survived it. Later on, I figured out that I actually had to seal one more thing up, so I had to pull the ladder back up, uh, get on the roof again, fix that, and then jumped off the roof a second time. So I overcame my fears, and I, I took that leap of faith, 
and it's similar to what the Falcons did today and with Matthew Judon. I don't know if these veterans, they're on the other side of 30. Justin Simmons, there's a reason why, even though we believe in him here and his, and his, his prowess, he's one of the greatest players to come out of Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast. We don't know what he's going to be as a 30-plus-year-old safety alongside Jesse Bates in that defensive backfield. We don't know if Matthew Judon still has enough juice to provide or enough health or, 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 or uh, you know, juice left in his body to get through a 17-game season plus the postseason. But the Falcons are taking that leap of faith this year. And I, and I have to commend Terry Fondo because all of the eyes and the criticism was surrounding that franchise right now because of what they did in the draft. And I, and I admire the way that they're going fully all in they're taking that leap off the roof, and you know what? We'll see if their bodies hold up. We'll see if Kirk Cousins can, can roam the pocket and, and get the ball to those playmakers and stay safe through 17 games. We'll see if B. John Robinson can rip it up the way that people are anticipating him doing in his second year, and we'll see what Raheem Morris looks like as a head coach. But no matter what any of that stuff pans out like, I know one thing for sure. The Falcons are in the division with the directionless New Orleans Saints. The, I mean, <laughs> the incredulous Carolina Panthers. And then you have, uh, well, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are led by Baker Mayfield, um, who are just running that thing back out there. I'm not sure exactly what they'll be this year. They have the division sealed up, but I also like how they have increased now what their ceiling can be. And maybe we have to stop talking about them as just a team that won their division before we kicked off the season. Dare I say are they contenders in the NFC if all things go right? If Justin Simmons, who was an all-pro last year at safety, next to all-pro safety Jesse Bates, like the Falcons are building something. We're not paying enough attention to Atlanta right now, CK. Hey, the division winner last year in the NFC South won, or excuse me, the pl- uh, playoff team in the yeah. NFC South. The Buccaneers won a playoff game. They did. Why can't the Falcons do the same thing? Well, they were, they were lucky enough to play the Eagles who were too busy playing or fighting against each other, So, uh, which we learned more about this go-round. I'm excited to see, though. Come December, we'll see uh, what things shake out around there. But I'm, I'm kind of, you know, we haven't done our Teddy Tua days on the Falcons yet. No. When I do it, I think I'm taking the over. I think their win total nine and a half. I think I'll be taking the over. I got to dig deeper in that. But again, the Atlanta Falcons making waves, taking a leap of faith, going all in. And that juiceless NFC South, it's theirs. It's theirs for the taking. Speaking of December, man, December 18th, Wednesday, December 18th, mark your calendars. The date is set. So will it. You can just punch it in, put, put it in stone. The Boca Raton Bowl kicking off its 11th year at FAU Stadium, Howard Schnellenberger Field. This is literally the first event I ever covered. It's the first event I covered as a member of ESPN West Palm. Four years ago, it was the Zach Wilson and um, against it was BYU versus UCF. Zach Wilson Bowl. And boy, did he rip it up before he went off to the uh, NFL and did, well, much of nothing after that. But the Boca Bowl produces so many great future NFL players. Devin Singletary played in it. We had guys like Bailey Zappi set records in it. BocaBowl.com. And also hop on Twitter at Boca Bowl or on Facebook.com slash Boca Bowl to get your Boca Bowl updates. We'll see you at the annual greatest outdoor party in South Florida, the Boca Raton Bowl. Again, Wednesday, December 18th at FAU Stadium in the primetime slot. You can catch it on ESPN or in person. On the other side, CCAT, we got to get on the safe bound, get around, and also address what the heck they are smoking in Colorado. I know it's legal. But that don't mean you need to get your hands on it before an interview. That's CCAT. I'm Theo Dorsey. We're Theoretically Speaking on ESPN 106.3. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studio.